so hello students so we again start with the four important points which we mentioned in our last class that a vector can be expressed as components along three unit vectors or they are non parallel and the unit vectors can be fixed in inertia reference or they can be fixed in orbiting one but while differentiating a vector if any of its components is along a rotating unit vector both that component and the rotating unit vector will get differentiated so this is a very important this is a very important point and perhaps this is the most important point why we will be deriving other relations in this course that means if you have a unit vector i which has an angular velocity omega that means i is fixed to a coordinate axis and the axis itself is rotating with the angular velocity omega then i dot will be omega cos i so with keeping these two relations in mind we <coughs> proceed with the essential kinematic relations so so kinematics for rotation about a point so now suppose this is consider the case of kinematic for rotation about a point so this o is the fixed point this capital x capital y capital z shown in green are the coordinate axis fixed to inertial reference a small x small y and small z are fixed to the body and p is also a point fixed to the body and from o the vector from o to p or the position vector of p is denoted by o so since p is a fixed point if you take components of this position vector o along small x small y and small z those components are rho small x rho small y and rho small z so they are constants because this point is fixed to the <coughs> rigid body which itself is rotating now if you take the derivative of this row this you call the this you may call the actual derivative or the total derivative then once this components of this row x row y row z will get differentiated so this is this term and then the unit vectors they will get differentiated so i dot k dot k but since row x row y row z are constants so it would be a null vector and this will be omega cos p so velocity of this point is p equal to v equal to omega cos p now once you get this vector relation you can express its components along any three non parallel axis you like so also remember that d rho dt is omega cos rho when rho is a fixed point now what about acceleration acceleration means again a that is total derivative of d rho dt and d rho dt is itself omega cross rho so once omega will get differentiated and then rho will get differentiated when omega is omega is differentiated this is this component and this is the second part is omega cross d rho dt and we know d rho dt is omega cross rho and this d omega dt that is the total derivative of omega angular velocity omega is alpha that is the angular acceleration alpha cross rho plus omega cross omega cross rho so for a point fixed to the rigid body we know what is the what is its velocity and what is its acceleration so these two one this, this is one relation for velocity and this is the other relation for acceleration now the next point comes or the next case comes when this p is not fixed to the rigid body but is moving with respect to the rigid body and presently it is here which is rho vector this position vector is rho from the point of rotation so here again if you differentiate so this will remain this will not be a null vector as it happened in the previous case so d rho dt is 
the this we call the DDT relative of rho plus omega cross rho. Okay. That means this is a velocity which a person who is fixed to the rotating reference, a person who is fixed to the rotating reference, it will feel that he will feel that this is the velocity of the point P. But this is not the actual velocity of point P. A person on inertial reference will uh, will feel that this total thing is the velocity. So this part we can call the relative velocity and this V is the total velocity. So if the point P is moving with respect to the rigid body, then the velocity is V relative plus omega cross V. And again you to go for acceleration. So here you see d rho dt is this one. So if you now again differentiate it, so this rho x dot, rho y dot and rho z dot will get differentiated. Then this i, j and k will get differentiated. Then omega cross rho will differentiate it. First omega and then rho. So this is the whole thing. So this we call d square dt square relative d2 dt2 d2 dt2 relative rho plus here omega cross d dt relative rho. This we call this is you know the d dt relative from the previous relation plus here from this term alpha cross rho plus omega cross d rho dt relative rho. Actually, it is d rho dt, but d rho dt can be replaced by these two terms. So, the acceleration is, this is the relative acceleration. That means the acceleration seen by a person with, which is fixed to the rotating reference and which will not understand the rotation. So, this is the relative acceleration. Then, omega cross, this is relative velocity. Then this is alpha cross rho, then this is omega cross, this first term is the relative velocity and the second term is omega cross omega cross rho. So this omega cross derivative and this omega cross derivative makes two omega cross rho. So the total acceleration is this and once a vector relation is obtained, the components can be taken along axis of any coordinate system. So here see, now omega is the angular velocity of the rigid body and that means omega is also the angular velocity of the coordinate frame small x, small y, small z. Now if we express omega like this where omega small x is the component of omega along small x, omega small y is the component of omega along small y and omega z is component of omega along small z axis. Then we can write omega like this. Or at the same time, we can write omega like this. Omega capital X along capital I, omega capital Y along capital J plus omega z capi uh, along capital K. So once we get a vector, we can get its components along any coordinate axis, any set of coordinate axis we wish. So we can write this or we can write this. So and this and this what is the relation between these omega small x, omega small y, omega small z and omega capital X, omega capital Y and omega capital Z. This is capital Z not small z. The relation is the vector transformation relation which we have already seen in our first chapter or first series of lectures. So what is angular acceleration? Angular acceleration is the total derivative of omega. That means the, the components will first get differentiated then this i, j and k will get differentiated. Since i, j and k are fixed to the body fixed coordinate system and the body fixed coordinate system has an angular velocity of omega. So i dot will be omega cross i, j dot will be omega cross j and k dot will be omega cross k. Now if we take omega common then this becomes omega cross omega and this is zero. So alpha is nothing but 
omega x dot i plus omega y dot j plus omega small z dot a. That means alpha x is omega x dot, alpha y equal to omega y dot and alpha z is omega z dot. So again if you if you take this then alpha is if you take this relation then if you differentiate it since i j and k capital i j and k are fixed in magnitude and direction only these terms will get differentiated so alpha capital x is equal to omega capital x dot alpha capital y is equal to omega capital y dot and alpha capital z is omega capital z dot but this is this type of expression is not true for an intermediate coordinate system this is true for the inertial reference and is also true for the body fixed reference but not true for any intermediate coordinate system how you consider so any intermediate coordinate system suppose you consider x dashed y dashed z dashed which is actually rotating about this capital z with the precession speed of psi dot which we already know from our knowledge of Euler angles. So here omega as we express omega like this in the previous page we can also express omega as omega x dashed i dashed omega y dashed j dashed and omega z dashed k dashed that means we are expressing omega in small in this blue x dashed x dashed blue y dashed and z dashed. So now if you differentiate it, differentiate these components will get differentiated and then i dashed, j dashed and k dashed will get differentiated. But what is i dashed? i dashed is having an angular velocity of psi dot k. So and j dashed is also having an angular velocity of psi dot k and k dot, k dash dot is also having an angular velocity of psi dot k because this x dashed, y dashed, z dashed that is having an angular velocity of psi dot k. So, this is psi dot k cross this and this will not be a null vector. So, this omega dot cannot be expressed as the components of omega dot that means the components of alpha that is alpha x dot is not equal to omega x dash dot. Alpha y dot is not equal to omega y dash dot and alpha z dot alpha z is not equal to omega z dash dot. Here there will be a dot I missed out. So let me put it here. <coughs> so here we will be discussing general 3D motion, the kinematics of general 3D motion. So, capital X, capital Y and capital Z as you see here is the inertial reference and the body is moving in space. So, the first job is to locate a point on the body. Here P is that point. So, you locate this point on the body. So, this vector locates the point P on the body and see here the pink axis are parallel to the inner shell axis. Now we have to give three consecutive rotations to get the configuration of the body. And this small x, small y and small z are body fixed coordinate system. So from this parallel x, parallel y and parallel z we have to go to small x, small y, small z by giving three consecutive rotations. So this is very much analogous to the 2D case. In 2D case, so suppose this is the final position of the body. So we locate first this point and from here to here we give a translation so that this becomes parallel to x here at this point and parallel to y here at this point and uh, z axis is perpendicular to us coming out of the paper towards us and then we give a rotation about z to get the final position of the body. So here any general motion is 
a translation plus a rotation about z axis. And here again, any general 3D motion is a translation plus three consecutive rotations about this point. So here, one translation means three variables and three rotations. So there are six degrees of freedom. Where here there were three degrees of freedom. Translation, two variables and one rotation about z axis. So kinematics for 3D general motion. So now suppose Q is a point fixed on the body. So how do we locate Q from the origin of the inertial reference? We locate the point using the position vector r, then this small rho vector, then small r vector is capital R plus rho. So rho is a fixed vector in this rigid body. So the, as before, the components of rho along the body fitted coordinate system small x, small y and small z are constants. So small r is capital R plus rho. Now just you just like before, you keep on taking derivatives. So dr dt is this plus this. So this is the extra term which we are getting here. This term is the same term which we got in rotation about a point. So again, this is the extra term. The velocity of q is the velocity of p plus omega cross rho. So this is the extra term and this term same as what we got before. Similarly, if you go for acceleration, acceleration will be acceleration of p plus what we got in case of rotation about a point. Now the next case is when the q point, <coughs> when the q point is moving with respect to the rigid body. Here again we locate the point and the present position of the moving point is given by rho. So here rho, the components of rho, rho small x, rho small y and rho small z, they are varying with time. So we get these, these two terms are same as what we got in rotation about a point. So this is only the extra term and for acceleration this is only the extra term. Every other term remains the same. So now will work out uh, two three problems on kinematics of rigid bodies, 3D kinematics of rigid bodies. So this problem we have already seen once in uh, in our first series of lectures. So this is this motor. This motor is on a turntable. 